Uh, greetings to our BFFs in Eureka and uh, Terry here from Ukiah. And uh, we love you all. We love all of us too. So um, here is a contemplative, contemplative reading. Uh, this is from Bruce Coburn, who is a Canadian musician. He's also a uh, humanitarian activist, one of the people that really puts his feet where his mouth is and uh, vice versa. So this is from his uh, autobiography that's called uh, Rumors of Glory. People who maintain a relationship with the divine bear a special burden. It's the burden of healing that is so needed after our poor stewardship of this blessed earth and of each other. There is a necessity for the sharing of real, personal, and experiential knowledge of God, of love. This is our mission, to get that experience, to be fueled by that love, and to go forth and share whatever insights and inspiration we may have gained while simultaneously supporting our communities and families in all ways possible. If we go out there shining with the light of God and brimming with love, it will be noticed. A door will be opened for spirit to walk through. Whether that spirit gets discussed in Islamic, Jewish, Christian, or any other religious terms is not really material. It's being awake to its presence that counts. It's recognizing that from the first to the last, we are all one in the gift of grace. And that if we hold this gift dear, we can be whole again. I see joy, I see peace, I see goodness surrounding me, I see love in every breath I breathe, I see God in everything, I see happiness, I see freedom, I see the beauty that lives in me. I see perfection in what life brings. I see God in everything. Good morning. Thank you, Terry. That was beautiful. And thank you, Jackson. That was also beautiful. So join with me now for our opening treatment and know that this is spoken into the one mind and it is yours. These words of truth are your words of truth. So take a deep breath. Close your eyes if that's comfortable. And know that there is only one thing and that thing is God and it is present in all things always. It is present within us. It is present around us. It is where we move and have our being. So as we claim that for ourselves, as we reveal the magnificence of God within us, 
we claim it for the entire planet. And as we do so, that shift happens within us, and it happens within the planet, whether we see it immediately or not, it happens. So we claim it, we rely upon it, we know that this is the substance of who we are, and for that we are grateful. We come together here this morning to see that God in each and every one of us, whether we're present or on Zoom. We see it in the beautiful music, in the words of inspiration. It uplifts us and it uplifts the planet. So we release these truths to the one mind, knowing that they already are so. And together we claim it by saying, and so it is. And so it is. And now we have Reverend Angelica. No, we have, nope. we have Jackson. Oh, we have Jackson I, again. I feel happiness. I feel freedom. I feel the beauty that lives in me. I feel perfection in what life brings. I feel God in everything. Thank you. Now we have Reverend Angelica. <laughs> and good morning again. Good morning. Now let me share our screen here. Thank you, Terry and Gail and Jackson. That was good doing a three-way there. <laughs> so today's message is Dance with the Donkey. And this was a title that was picked by the Global Vision people who created the, the uh, themes for this year. And I kind of like that idea, you know, dancing with the donkey. When I hear her first read that, in my mind's eye, I saw one of those, uh, not a donkey, but the Lippenser stallions mm -hmm. that do the dancing that uh, are so beautiful when they do that. And, of course, you know, when you think of a donkey, you think of sort of cartoon kind of donkeys. In a way, I really haven't had that much experience with donkeys. With horses, yes, but not with donkeys. Uh, so dancing with the donkey sounded interesting. But actually, this is also Palm Sunday. This is also, we're in the midst of Ramadan. And also, uh, Passover will happen at the end of this week. So uh, one of the things I love about this particular season is that there's so many holy things happening sacred things happening and of course we're basically based in Christianity and so uh, I went and I looked at the four Gospels to see what the actual story was even though I've read them many times and this is the story where Jesus uh, sends some of his disciples to town and says you're going to see a donkey with her colt bring me those horses. And so they do. They go and they ask. And Oh, and he also tells them, if anybody asks you why you want to take them, tell them it's for me. And so they do. And he gets it. And apparently, I, I'd always thought of him riding the donkey, the elder. Uh, but no, it says in scriptures that he rode the colt. And as he was riding into Jerusalem down this particular road, the people had heard about all of his miracles that he had worked and his powerful teaching, and they celebrated him by tearing uh, palm branches off the date palms and throwing their clothes on top of that to give him, uh, to celebrate him. And of course, they were saying Hosanna, which means glory to the highest. And uh, the whole event sounds so celebratory, you forget that Jesus is riding into the worst week of his life. You know, he's going to be arrested and prosecuted and crucified, and then he's going to be resurrected. 
And I believe he knew that already. I believe he knew what was coming. Maybe he didn't know exactly how everything was going to happen, but I have a feeling that he knew enough to move forward uh, to say yes. So one of the things that happens is that uh, in many Christian traditions nowadays, Jesus is specialized. He is, he is beyond, I mean, they don't talk about God as much as now as they talk about Jesus. And one of the, I found this quote by Dr. Raymond Charles Barker, who I consider to be one of the popes of religious science. He said this, God never specialized anyone, but anyone can specialize God. God was the specialty of Jesus. And I thought about that and how that's what I would like God to be in my life. I want God to be my specialty. I mean, after all, I'm a minister, you know, why not? Why not, right? But I've had that, you know, even when I was a little kid and going living at a Catholic school, I wanted to be a nun. Well, actually, I told them I wanted to be a priest mm -hmm. and got laughed at. You know, I could be a nun, but I couldn't be a priest. But anyway, so God was the specialty of Jesus. So Jesus has this idea, this essence in his mind and his heart and his whole being, and he's basically going for it. So metaphysically, the donkey is that part of us that's stubborn, untrainable, undisciplined. And these are from the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary, which is a great book. If you ever want to read the Bible, read Charles, look up the names and places in Charles Fillmore's uh, Metaphysical Bible Dictionary, because sometimes the stories mean something totally different than you think. So the donkey is also persistent and can endure and travel the rocky and broken road. So there is a part of us that as we move into our spiritual paths, as continue down them, that's part, stubborn. You know, sometimes we don't want to do what something is knocking inside of us or in our intuition, in our hearts or minds, and saying, you know, go, 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 do this. Like when I moved from Hawaii to British Columbia, there was a... Uh, I remember standing at my dining room window looking out at the Hawaiian forest lands going, you really want me to move away from this? It didn't make sense to me, but the, the, it was like I felt like I was going to get kicked in the butt out the door if I didn't say yes, right? So that, that was the stubborn part of me that didn't want to go. And yet everything that happened... Uh, up until the time I left. I mean, I basically told my husband that at the time, this is what needs to happen. Will you come with me? He said, no, he didn't want to. He wanted to stay in Hawaii. He felt that Hawaii was really his home. And by this time, he was my uh, co-pastor. So uh, he wanted to stay and keep our church alive there, which he did quite well. And in the meantime, I'm feeling uh, neglected. I'm feeling like, come on, this is an adventure. This is what we need. I, I'm being called to do this. And I was called so strongly that I said, then I'm going regardless. And that was really hard for him. And it was really hard for me. And he ended up having a heart attack. I drove him to the hospital because in where I lived in Hawaii was very... Um, uh, rural and I knew it was going to take longer for the ambulance to get to us etc so I drove him to the hospital he was screaming most of the time because he was in so much pain and uh, it was just a horrible day and then um, he discovered that he had a condition like his older brother did that made him have a weak heart but uh, so I stayed that's why I ended up staying another year, because I couldn't leave him like that. But then it just kept calling me, just kept calling me, and, and I had to honor it. Jesus is moving into Jerusalem, and the word Jerusalem means habitation of peace. And when you look at the stories, it doesn't look like it's going to be a very 
peaceful place, does it? And But his right into Jerusalem is about our I am nature, knowing that peace is always present and it waits for our decision to enter into it. So Dr. Holmes says, we believe in our own soul, our own spirit, and our own destiny, for we understand that the life of each of us is God. And Jesus really personifies that, that he really believed that his life was God's life. So here's my ideas about dancing with the donkey. One is you have to be open to it. Now Jesus was writing on a new cult. So this cult hadn't had any previous training. It was just there, open which is what we have to do. We're riding our own donkeys. You know, this is our body, right? And we have to let go of all our past perceptions of how things could be, should be, etc., and move along our path. And we have the opportunity right now to move not only to vision what our centers are going to look like, but vision what our life is going to look like. What is the rest of your life from this day on going to look like? So be open to uh, whatever the newness is that wants to come into you. And I believe that we're all being called for something. Let go of any judgments that people say. I mean, the thought that flutters through my mind is, you know, when I was young and I used to love to draw and write and I wanted to be an author who illustrated our own books, etc. And my mother says, oh, starving artist. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, if I had held on to that, I wouldn't now have a published book. I wouldn't have been writing my Friday messages every Friday, etc. So I had to be open to that, to let go of all of those things from the past. The second one is you have to be willing to be led. This new cult that Jesus is writing is uh, got to be willing to be led down this street with people yelling and singing. It was probably nerve wracking to the poor cult, but we have to be willing to be led as well, which means we have to be open to our intuition. We have to do our prayer work, our meditation, our journaling, our take spiritual education, do whatever it is to do so that we can be open to where we're being led and we can be more willing to be led. The other thing is, is you have to be excited about it. If we're being led somewhere and we're going into it with doubts and fears and limitations, that's what we're going to manifest all along the path, those rocks that we talked about the donkey going over. But if we're, we allow ourselves to be excited about it, then the uh, experiences that are happening around us, the experiences that we draw into our life, they can, even if they're what we would have called not so good experiences, we can realize, oh, something good is going to come out of this. There's something I needed out of this experience to further me along my path. What did I need to learn or what did I need to let go of? So be excited about being on this path. I mean, the truth is, Every single one of us should be getting out of bed in the morning going, oh, God, it's morning, instead of, oh, God, it's morning, right? We have to be excited about everything. I mean, I look at my phone before I go to bed to see what is on my calendar for the next day so I know if I can sleep late or not, which is rare because the cats have their own internal clocks. And they're like, oh, you're not up yet? Meow. You know, <laughs> feed me. But anyway, the... so I have this excitement about what's going to be happening the next day, which then I wake up excited about what's going to be happening that day. So uh, allow yourself to get excited. I mean, if you tell a child, 
we're going to the zoo today, we're going to the zoo in a couple hours, then they immediately get excited about going to the zoo, right? So be excited about whatever is along your path as you move along it. And my final one is to be loving. Now, I don't know if that cult uh, felt Jesus' energy, and you know he had some wonderfully intense, amazing energy. Uh, I don't know whether he felt that energy and he was able to move along this path into Jerusalem because he could feel this energy. But I do know that because Jesus' teaching was basically about love, that he would be have loving energy for this young animal that he was riding. And that animal was able to feel it. We, we all know that if we give loving energy to animals, they will respond with loving energy. Even if they're feral. You know, they, they might not look like they're responding with loving energy if they're if you you give them some if it's a new feral cat for instance and you give them some loving energy and they hiss at you or they go you know like they're going to scratch you but they'll be there the next day and they be there and they be there until finally they let you pet them you know so love love wins so there's a letter that i want to read to you this was uh written by Einstein to his daughter. Uh, I think her name is Lazari or Lazelle. I can't, I wrote it down and it's spelled in two different ways. So sorry about that. So let's just listen to this letter for a minute. When I proposed the theory of relativity, very few understood me. And what I will reveal now to transmit to humankind will also collide with the misunderstanding and prejudice in the world. There is an extremely powerful force that, so far, science has not found a formal explanation to. It is a force that includes and governs all others and is even behind any phenomenon operating in the universe and has not yet been identified by us. This universal force is love. When scientists look for a unified theory of the universe, they forgot this most powerful unseen force. Love is light that enlightens those who give and receive it. Love is gravity because it makes some people feel attracted to others. Love is power, because it multiplies the best we have and allows humanity not to be extinguished in their blind selfishness. Love unfolds and reveals. For love, we live and die. Love is God, and God is love. This force explains everything and gives meaning to life. This is the variable that we have ignored for far too long because mainly, maybe because we are afraid of love, because it is the only energy in the universe that we have not learned to drive at will. To give visibility to love, I made a simple substitution in my most famous equation. Instead of E equals MC squared, we accept that the energy to heal the world could be obtained through love multiplied by the speed of light squared. We arrive at the conclusion that love is the most powerful force there is because it has no limits. If we want our species to survive, if we are to find a meaning in life, if we want to save the world and every sentient being that inhabits it, love is the one and only answer. Perhaps we are not yet ready to make a bomb of love, a device powerful enough to entirely destroy the hate, selfishness, and greed that devastates the planet. However, each individual carries with them, within them a small but powerful generator of love whose energy is waiting to be released. When we learn to give and receive this universal energy, 
we will have affirmed that love conquers all, is able to transcend everything and anything, because love is the quintess quintessence of life. Your father, Albert Einstein. Wow. Isn't that amazing? What an amazing letter. And what an amazing way to think about this idea. We've talked throughout religious science centers all over the place about God being love. The divine energy of love. That's that's what I think of it as, is this energy that is absolutely everywhere that never began and will never end. And it's just an energy that's flowing through you, flowing through you, flowing through me, flowing through the air we're breathing, the plants and out in nature. There isn't anything that isn't made out of this divine energy of love. So my feeling for today, this Palm Sunday, is for us to start looking at our journey of love. You know, when we're little girls, I don't know about little boys because I don't remember being one before, but uh, little girls are raised with this idea of someday your prince will come and you're going to meet them and fall madly in love. And so love is what we're looking for for the rest of our life. And we forget we're already that. So we're little boys. Already love. So our job to celebrate Palm Sunday, to celebrate this Holy Week, is to walk that path of love as much as we possibly can. Because through us, this divine energy works. Through us, it blesses each other. It nourishes each other. It uplifts each other. So let us be open and willing to be led on this path and excited about it and be loving. Love is the greatest power in the universe. So together let's say this affirmation and then I'll do a treatment. I am filled with gratitude for the abundance and creativity that flows through me, around me, and is me. I eagerly allow myself to open to the unlimited potential of what I can create simply by believing. So take a breath. And maybe for just a moment before I start this treatment, Think about what your path is, that path to peace, that path to love. Our path is usually something that we absolutely adore doing. So recognizing that there is only this one life, and that life is God's life, and that this life is a life of love, and this life is our life, right here and right now, always has been and always will be. Speaking in the first person, I know for each one of us that we are ready and willing to follow the path that is ours to follow. We are ready and willing to know at a deeper level or a higher level, whatever you want to call it, the truth of our being. That truth is that we are God individualized. We're unique. We're wonderful. We're amazing. And so I declare that I start accepting this truth for myself. I start accepting that my job here, so to speak, is to be that love in the world. And so when I see things that I want to get angry at, I let set aside a part of my mind right now to be that silent witness or not so silent witness. And I declare that it gently, easily, and perhaps even humorously 
reminds me that that's a path I don't want to go on. Maybe it asks me, what is the loving thing to do here? I know for each one of us that when we hear about the horrific experiences that people all over the world are going through, we allow ourselves to shower them with love. Instead of moving into a position of hating the per perpetrators, we shower them with love. If there's people next door to us or in our office or in our lives in any way that cause us to be aggravated, we now shower them with love. And we see that each one of these people, each experience, it's all God. It's all this divine energy of love. And the more we claim it, the more we experience it. And how wonderful this is. The more we experience it, the more the world experiences it. And how wonderful this is. And so with a grateful heart, I rejoice in our decisions to be more loving, more kind, more compassionate, more godlike, more of our true nature. And I release these words now, knowing that they are already so, and so it is. And take another breath, and we get to experience music with Calvin Johnson. So I'm going to I'm going to pause the share. Oh, now it won't let me pause it. It just says stop share. Okay. I'm stopping the share and we'll let Calvin sing. Living Spirit, I am grateful. Loving Spirit, I am free. So many gifts upon my table, loving kindness is to me, loving spirit, I am grateful, loving spirit for the way, for this rich abundant living. Every single day, and I give thanks for the knowing. I give thanks for the way your love is overflowing every time I pray. I thank you, God, for one good day. Living Spirit, I am grateful. Loving Spirit, for the way, for this rich, abundant living every single day and I give thanks for the knowing I give thanks for the way your love is overflowing every time I pray
You have a wonderful voice. Thank you. I'm going to remove the pin here and put one on mine again. Okay, now we have to go back to, this is what I want you to do. I want you to think about the offering that you're going to be giving this morning. And perhaps you might want to hold it to your heart or hold it in your hands. And let's say this offering blessing together. I gratefully give from the fullness of my abundance, knowing my gift blesses this center, all in it and beyond, and so it is. And here is the uh, addresses, etc., on how to make your uh, donations. Of course, there's the basket here, back by the door. And everybody else gets to send it in or click on donate on the Eureka's website and it'll take you to PayPal, etc. Just make sure that when you do, whenever, I'll tell this to everybody, whenever you use PayPal for your donations, make sure you put it under friends and family because then the centers don't get charged a fee for it. So, and let's just think for a moment. Let's just bless for a moment. Let us be blessed by this amazing, generous giver that is the universe. And so we're so grateful for absolutely everything we receive. We're absolutely grateful for everything that we can give out. We celebrate being part of this great river of circulation. And we know for all of us that the universe financially blesses us just as we bless our centers. We're grateful, so grateful, and so it is. All right, somebody here gets to come up and read the uh, statement of inclusion. Who would like to do that? Be happy to. I have to go get my glasses, though. So if somebody else may want to do it, I'll do it. Okay. All right, Teresa, thank you. Wait a minute. Oh, I have my long distance glasses on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, these glasses. Oh, I swear. Wow. Getting old is not for sissies. <laughs> Let's just know that we all have perfect vision, even with the glasses. Okay. We, the Eureka and Ukiah Centers for Spiritual Living, are communities that celebrate diversity, foster inclusion, champion inner work, and create space for brave, vulnerable conversations. We are communities that honor the unique emanation, emanation of God that each person embodies and advocate with people for human rights and dignity for all. We are communities that bless each other, see sacredness in all life, remain learners and listeners so we may grow together and understand that oneness is not sameness. We know, uh, what's that last oh. sentence? We know our, we, remember we know our beloved. Yeah. Oops. Go back. No, go forward. I have to move these up here. Oh, where did it go? You're getting good at this. <laughs> we know our beloved community is revealed more fully when we love each other well. Yay! <laughs> All right, and we get to close our service with another song by Calvin. So let's let's go for that. But wait, before you start, just hold on one minute. I want to remove the pin on my picture and put one on yours so that people can see you 
when they go to speaker view and I'm gonna stop the share. Here we go. In this moment, in this place, I remember who I am. Letting fear and worry fall away from me. I open my eyes and see there is only love. There is only love. Love that heals, love that sets me free. There is only When I lose myself, when I feel I've lost my way, when I go inside and quiet my mind, I can hear spirit gently say, there is only sets me free there is only love and this voice of love it is singing through my life it is what I am it's a part of me it is what I choose to be there is only love there is only love love that heals love that sets me free there is only